Namaste. So now we're continuing with Vichara Sangram, this wonderful book, an early teaching of Ramana Maharshi about self-inquiry, Atma Vichara. Disciple, when one inquires into the root of self-conceit, which is of the form I, all sorts of different thoughts without number seem to rise, and not any separate I thought. Maharshi, whether the nominative case, which is the first case, appears or not, the sentences in which the other cases appear have as their basis the first case. Similarly, all the thoughts that appear in the heart have as their basis the egoity, which is the first mental mode, I, the cognition of the form, I am the body. Thus, it is the rise of egoity that is the cause and source of the rise of all other thoughts. Therefore, if the self-conceit of the form of egoity, which is the root of the illusory tree of samsara, bondage consisting of transmigration, is destroyed, all other thoughts will perish completely like an uprooted tree. Whatever thoughts arise as obstacles to one's sadhana, spiritual discipline, the mind should not be allowed to go in their direction, but should be made to rest in one's self, which is the Atman. One should remain as witness to whatever happens, adopting the attitude, let whatever strange things happen, happen. Let us see. This should be one's practice. In other words, one should not identify oneself with appearances. One should never relinquish oneself. This is the proper means for destruction of the mind, mano nasa, which is of the nature of seeing the body as self and which is the cause of all the aforesaid obstacles. This method, which easily destroys egoity, deserves to be called devotion, bhakti, meditation, dhyana, concentration, yoga, and self-realization, jnana. Because God remains of the nature of the self, shining as I in the heart. Because the scriptures declare that thought itself is bondage, the best discipline is to stay quiescent without ever forgetting Him, God, the Self, after resolving in Him the mind, which is of the form of the I thought, no matter by what means. This is the conclusive teaching of the Scriptures. So this is another long one. <laughs> but it brings up a very important point that the first person, the subject, I, is the root of all other thoughts. And even if a thought appears to be about the second person, you, or the third person, he, she, or it, or them, it's really at the root about I. Let's give a simple example. One is concerned about the stock market. So at first, this seems to be an instance of the third person. Those traders in that market are doing this and that. Stocks are going up and down or whatever. But isn't it actually an expression of concern for I? Well, I am invested in this market. If my stocks go down, I would lose money, and that would be a threat to my survival. So in the background of every thought, no matter what the apparent subject may be, or I should use the word topic rather than subject because that's easily confused with the self. So no matter what the topic of a thought may be, at its root, it is about I the false self 
egoity or ahankara. Ahankara means false ego. It's false because it's synthetic. It doesn't exist in reality. Even, <laughs> even the false reality or the mirage of Maya, huh? it is something added on. It is something constructed, fabricated. It is, to put it simply, a lie. What does exist is the self with a capital S. The self is nothing but Brahman. But to reach the self or to uncover the self to our awareness, we have to destroy all the distractions that cover it. That is the purpose of sadhana. And the result of sadhana is the end of samsara. Samsara is the round of repetition of birth and death. And we've covered this in great detail on this channel. So one should understand the cause of all suffering is engaging in this round of birth and death. Creation, maintenance, and destruction. So the act of creation is the creation of a thought. And all thoughts are rooted in the concept of I, the small self, huh? the individual. So when this thought is uprooted, like a tree that has been pulled up by the root, the rest of the tree of thoughts dries up and disappears all by itself. No further effort is necessary. This is what is so great about Ramana's approach, that he focuses on the one thing that accomplishes all the aims of sadhana and self-realization, which is simply destroying the thought, I. Now, the mind is going to resist this. <laughs> After all, the thought I is its very foundation, its very reason for existence, to protect that thought, to elaborate that thought in so many ways and create a confusing jungle like a banyan tree. Huh? Have you ever seen a banyan tree? It's got trunks and roots and branches going in all directions, coming down from the sky, <laughs> rising up from the ground, and one cannot tell the beginning or end of the tree. Nevertheless, the banyan tree seed is a tiny thing about the size of a mustard seed. So that whole great tree comes from one tiny seed. And in the case of the mind, the whole complex structure comes from the thought I. So if this thought can be vanquished, if it can be uprooted, if you can cut off the energy to this one thought, then slowly, slowly over time, everything else will disappear. So, of course, people are going to ask, well, how do you do that? <laughs> it's like, well, how do I scratch my nose? <laughs> I just do it, right? Because I have a hand and the hand has a fingernail, and the fingernail can scratch, and I move it next to my nose, and that's it. I've scratched my nose successfully <laughs> without thinking about it, simply because it can be done. It's well within the possibilities of the motion of the body. So in a similar way, when we're dealing with the mind, to suppress any given thought, is well within the abilities of the mind. And, of course, the way you suppress a thought is not forcibly stopping it. That will only give it more power. But simply to deprive it of energy, to deprive it of attention. So this is the actual uh, method behind devices 
such as mantra, puja, different kinds of meditation, where the mind is focused on a, an object either within or without the body. But ultimately, all thoughts of whatever kind are about taking the body as the self. So if the idea of the self with a lowercase s is eradicated by simply starving it of energy and attention, then all the other thoughts related to the body will also disappear. I've experienced this and it's wonderful because what is the cause of suffering in life? 90% of it is worry. Oh, this might happen, that might happen, my stock might go down. <laughs> or there might be some political change, or, you know, something might go wrong with my health, or whatever. But in all cases, the subject is I. The topic, rather, is I, the small self, the individual ego. And anything else related to that as a concern for one's survival becomes a cause of mental suffering. So 90% of suffering is just anticipating what might go wrong or what could go wrong or what is going wrong. <laughs> and that, of course, is in terms of our desires. So we have a multitude of desires connected with this individual self. And pretty much all of them are based on the body. We don't think much about the mind itself. The mind is more like a tool that we use to attain our other desires. But if we think about it, we have desires. We want a peaceful mind. We want an intelligent mind. We want a mind that does what we tell it to. But our whole effort in creating the self, the ego, a hankar, the false ego, is to set up a bunch of self-repeating cycles of thought based on memories and of the form of a vortex or a whirlpool. And once these are set up, they more or less repeat all by themselves. So, for example, we might have a recurring worry about our health. Or we might have a periodic concern about some economic situation. Or we might have a desire to attain a, an important title, like doctor or something like that, CEO, you know, whatever. And these are all related to the concept of I as the body. The body is the instrument. The mind is the cause. But the root of it all is the false ego, I. And whether it explicitly appears in the thoughts or desires or not, I is the root of them all. So, of course, people are going to ask, well, how do you stop thinking or assuming the presence of I. And the answer is, well, you just stop thinking at all. And of course, how do you do that, right? <laughs> Let go of the body. Let go of the senses. Let go of desires. Ultimately, even let go of consciousness and just abide in the heart as I, I. In other words, pure awareness, aware of only itself. All other objects have been let go. And there's a very nice quote by the Buddha about this. Bhikkhus, when one does not intend and one does not plan 
and one does not have a tendency towards anything. No basis exists for the maintenance of consciousness. When there is no basis, there is no support for the establishing of consciousness. When consciousness is unestablished and does not come to growth, there is no inclination. When there is no inclination, there is no coming and going. When there is no coming and going, there is no passing away and being reborn. When there is no passing away and being reborn, future birth, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure and despair cease. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. So the Buddha is saying the same thing as Ramana, just using different language. Ramana is saying, concentrate on the self with a capital S. The Buddha is saying, cease all intentions. And as a natural consequence, consciousness will cease because there's no basis for it. In other words, consciousness requires a support. It requires a basis. It's dependent, dependently originated. It requires a cause. And that cause is our intention. In a word, desire. So as long as we desire to exist as an individual, as long as we intend to go somewhere and be someone and have something and do something, then consciousness will continue. And as long as consciousness continues, there's going to be birth and death and suffering and rebirth and so on. So in other words, when the Buddha says, let go of all intention, let go of all inclination toward this or that. And Ramana is saying, focus on the self. They're saying the same thing. And it has the same effect, which is to deprive the mind of its root, its source of nourishment, which is your attention and intention. So if you drop these things, if you stop putting energy into attention and intention towards I, the separate self, the false ego, this unplugs the whole thing, including birth and death and consciousness and everything. And it leaves only the original self. And as the Buddha says, this is the end of all suffering. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.